I always make the right decision and I'm not easily swayed by a little a little flat that's sitting on the side of the bar that's sipping a, 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 a cappuccino. Give a f about that. I don't care how cute she is. I don't care how young she is. Can't get me to crash out over no box. Because I'm a king. See, I'm not like Umar Johnson. I'm not the dude that's telling you how to be out here uh, fixing the community while at the same time calling himself King Kong and then petitioning for pussy online. I don't have women running up and throwing a person in the air in order to say that they did anything because they know better than that shit. I will sue the fucking pants off you because you know you ain't never been in my presence where you can say that you even been alone with me. You know better than that shit. See, I'm not the dude that got children out of wedlock. I'm not the dude that's easily broken. I'm not broken. I've never been done dirty. I've never been divorced. I ain't never came close to no divorce. I ain't never had no conversation about no divorce. I don't even let hypothetical conversations like that even come in my purview in real life. And that bothers them. It bothers men and women alike. Because they ain't seen no junk like this before. Not in real time. Not somebody that they can relate to. Not somebody that's going to tell them the truth. Not somebody that's not going to crash out. Not somebody that's rich. All of the things, all of the accolades, something got to be wrong. And that's why I'm the one that can confidently come to you and say, you need to stop having children. Stop getting pregnant. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even want to be in the presence of a woman that's tainted. I don't even want you. You don't have a chance because he already had you. Listen, if it's that easy for me to get it, I don't feel that special. I don't feel that special. I'm not special enough because he hit it and he hit it and Dreadhead hit it and Umar hit it. Boys didn't hit it. <laughs> boys didn't hit it. He, he didn't have a chance. We ain't worried about boys. And the favorite football player hit it and the basketball player hit it and the homie from the hood hit it. And they ran a train on you before that. And then you had a kid by him and you had a kid by him and you had a kid by him. And then for some reason, you think you're supposed to be sitting in the presence of kings. Since when did that happen? Since when did that happen? How, how is it that we started qualifying ourselves for people that we don't even qualify to sit in front of? And then they want you to be a step crash dummy. They are literally shaming good men. See, this is how you know we at the end of times. This is how you know that we at the end of times because God said it. He said good will become bad and bad will become good. And so now, instead of them shaming the people, them, first of all, you got to shame yourself because it says get the beam out of thine own eye. Instead of them shaming each other. I don't see nobody holding Fawny Willis accountable since the text messages then came out. And she literally named herself inside of the phone uh, Pussy Gripper something. Power Pussy Gripper. Fulton County DA is Power Pussy Gripping. <laughs> now, Lana, she, she, at least she paying. At least she pay, Listen, at, at the very least, you can say what you want about Fawny. But Fawny paid her way into that D. She gave that man a whole contract and she knew he wasn't even qualified for the job. He was running around, stuttering, didn't know nothing about the job. Ain't never prosecuted nobody in his whole fucking life. This guy is, is, a, is, a, is a baby lawyer, baby driver lawyer. At least she paid for the dick. Y'all just think that y'all entitled to it. Y'all think y'all entitled to it. So, question, before we get into this live stream, because I think that we're going to go deep tonight. Before we go into this live stream, I just got a quick question, ladies. 
And fellas, you can have this conversation amongst yourself too. What qualifies you for a good man? Gentlemen, for those of you that have held yourself to a higher standard, have fixed your life, have gone through the fire, has become the best version of yourself and continue to evolve based off of what your your next preference is, your, your next purpose is, your, your growth curve, because your purpose is ever evolving depending on where you at in your life. I know a lot of y'all think that your purpose is singular, but it's not because you evolve and the thing that you know and the thing that you experience is going to continue to push you in a different direction. It's similar to when you read the word of God. And the reason why I've read the word of God multiple different times and I always continue to read it is because at different points in my life, it actually hits different and there's a new revelation depending on where it is that you at. And so your purpose continues to evolve. Now, I tell you all the time, vet for the direction that you're going in. So the woman that you wind up being with is not the woman that you've met because she has to evolve with you. And a woman that's truly under your covering, a woman that's truly submitted to you, can't stay the same. Anton, how do you vet for the direction that you're going in? How do you vet a woman for the direction that you're going in? Because think about it. You can't see who she's to become. And so the only thing that you have to go off of is her present state. Well, how can you vet for the woman that you're supposed to be with based off of the direction that you're going in? Because we know that overwhelmingly, guys, the value of a man continues to rise as he gets older. The value of a woman based off of the sexual marketplace value diminishes as she gets older. That's why they call it the wall, because she hit a certain point in her life to where if she can't climb, she bound a drizzle. Shout out to Snoop Dogg. So how do you then vet for a woman based off of where you're projected to go and not where you currently at? Because that's one of the biggest problems that men have. They look at a woman and they look at her superficial, right? They look at her wig. They look at her eyelashes, they look at that fake ass personality, that chameleon like uh, mindset and likeness. They look at all of the things that don't mean anything. Building a relationship on sand instead of in the ground, in concrete, right? In limestone and whatever it is, in bedrock. In bedrock, that's what the words say. Let me make sure that I quote the word correctly. In bedrock, how do you vet for a woman? Because I, I noticed that a lot of these guys is mad at me. They're not mad at me based off of anything that I've done to them or things that I'm saying that's wrong because they also say that they agree with me. They're mad at me based off of the idea that I'm not a reflection of being a pookie, which would make them feel better. And so what they neglect to do is ask the questions that's pertinent to their life, the question that would actually lead them in a better direction so that they can actually get the results. So you're not running up a hill like the boy from yesterday said. The questions that you should be asking, not requiring for me to continue to show you pookie dumb, is, well, how do I get to the point to where I can really, really take off? And then more importantly, because most men want to be married, contrary to popular belief from women, how do I vet for the woman based off of where I'm going? It's the sentiment of her heart. It's the decisions that she's made all the way up until the point that she met you. That's why it's important for her to have a low body count. Why? Because then she's molded according to how it is that you continue to groom her, which is exactly what they label you at the altar. The vows is not just for you. The vows is for her.